Hello, I'm Nathan Donaldson. I'm an orthopedic oncologist and associate professor of orthopedic surgery at Children's Hospital Colorado and University of Colorado Hospital. And today we're going to talk about chronic recurrent multifocal osteomyelitis, both how we diagnose it and how we treat it. So we shorten chronic recurrent multifocal osteomyelitis to CRMO because otherwise it's a real mouthful to say every time. And it's not the perfect name for this disorder because it's not always chronic, it's not always recurrent, and it's not always multifocal. What it is always is osteomyelitis. And so sometimes you'll hear it referred to also as chronic non-bacterial osteomyelitis or non-bacterial osteomyelitis. So these names get used interchangeably in the literature. So CRMO is an inflammatory disorder of bone. We think of it as an auto-inflammatory process. It's not autoimmune because we haven't identified a specific part of the immune system that is attacking the bone, but it is an inflammatory process. And so the body's normal inflammation process is turned on abnormally in the bones, and it causes pain, and it also causes certain radiographic changes and MRI changes in the bones. And we think of this as a disease of the skeletally immature. So while it is theoretically possible that you can see this in adults, the fact of the matter is it almost exclusively occurs in people whose growth plates have not yet closed. So our goal today is to look at some of the defining characteristics of patients with CRMO, to describe the workup and treatment and treatment course for patients with CRMO. When we look back at our patients from Children's Hospital Colorado, they have a slight female predominance. Our average age at diagnosis is nine years. It's multifocal in approximately 72% of patients. And most of our patients will also undergo multiple episodes of treatment. So about 74% of our patients will need multiple courses of treatment. And when we look at the sites where it occurs, it occurs most prominently around the knees, the ankles, and the feet. The majority of our patients who have CRMO present with pain, and many of them have had pain for many years, sometimes many months. It's very rare for us to catch somebody with CRMO who's only had it for a few weeks. And the reason for that is usually it's an insidious onset of pain. So the pain won't be very bad at the beginning and it's attributed to either sports-related processes or injuries that the patients have had. And sometimes parents just think it's growing pains. But when the pain persists and is always in the same location and just doesn't go away, then people will start working it up and then we'll find the CRMO. And because it's in orthopedics, we generally start with radiographs and then based on the results of those radiographs, move on to advanced imaging, most prominently MRIs. So when we look at patients' radiographs who have CRMO, sometimes you can't see any findings on the radiographs. Um, when we do, most often you'll see some radiolucent lesions that are right next to their physis. So the red arrow on the radiograph is pointing to a periphyseal lucency and then the corresponding MRI can be seen on the other side of the screen. And so what we see on the MRI is areas of increased fluid signal within the bones, specifically high T2 signal. And sometimes you'll see those same periphyseal erosions on the MRI that you can see on the radiographs. So oftentimes we'll see different radiographic findings depending on where the CRMO is located. So most often you'll see lucencies as is seen in this ischial tuberosity. And with treatment, you can see the bones reconstitute and return to a more normal appearance, which you can see on the right side of the screen. Where we're most concerned about CRMO is when it occurs in the spine. Because in most locations in the body, although any bone can be affected, we don't generally see pathologic fractures, we don't see long-term deformity, and that's not true for the spine. So when CRMO occurs in the spine, patients can get compression fractures. And so what you see here is what we call vertebra plana, when there's when the vertebral body is completely flattened out. And unlike some other conditions that can occur in bones, when you have a compression fracture with CRMO, that vertebral plana will not reconstitute so the patients can get permanent deformities of their spine. After we get imaging for patients and we suspect CRMO, we generally recommend a biopsy to confirm the diagnosis. And the reason for that is that CRMO is a diagnosis of exclusion. So when we have T2 hyperintense changes in bones on MRI, the differential diagnosis includes the small round blue cell processes, and these include CRMO, bacterial osteomyelitis, leukemia, lymphoma, Ewing sarcoma, and longer Hans cell histiocytosis, among others. And so what we want to make sure is that it's not one of these other processes that is causing these changes in the bone and this pain. We want to ensure that it is CRMO so that we don't miss a more serious diagnosis.
Once we've confirmed the diagnosis with biopsy, then we'll move on to treatment. And the treatment is generally an algorithmic approach, so we start with NSAIDs, and at our institution, we almost always start with naproxen. We do that because we've been giving it to young people for many decades. It has very few side effects, and it's relatively inexpensive. And a large majority of our patients will do very well on naproxen alone. If the naproxen doesn't work, we'll go on to treatments including methotrexate or TNF inhibitors, and we also use bisphosphonates. The only time we really deviate from this kind of a treatment algorithm is when we see CRMO in the spine. And so when we see CRMO in the spine, we generally start with bisphosphonates because we believe that bisphosphonates can prevent progression to vertebra plana and compression fractures. So once we have our patients started on their treatment, our goal is to have six months pain-free. So we start with naproxen. If that renders them pain-free, then we'd like them to be pain-free for a total of six months before we stop their treatment. If the naproxen doesn't work and we move on to other treatments, then we generally like to, we don't start that six month clock until we get the patient to be pain free. Initially, when we started treating CRMO, we'd only treat for three months at a time, but we found that our recurrence rate was very high. And we have decreased our recurrence rate with going to six months worth of treatment. When we review our patients and look at how well people respond to treatment, approximately 74% of our patients require more than one course of treatment. And that doesn't mean they get different medicines for their treatment, but if we start them on naproxen and have them pain-free for six months and we stop the medication and it comes back, then we'll go back on the naproxen generally for a year for that second treatment course. So when you're talking to patients about what is your treatment going to look like, we want to make sure that they know that this is a prolonged treatment, but also want to make sure that they know that this is not a life sentence. Because the CRMO generally disappears uh, once they're skeletally mature, even if we have difficulty treating it, once they are done growing, the CRMO generally goes away. So if you have a patient who's coming to see you and they have problems with continued pain without a diagnosis or they haven't had any trauma but they have persistent pain in one or more locations, that would be a time to consider the diagnosis of CRMO. The other thing we often wonder about is how much of our culture negative osteomyelitis is CRMO. So for patients who have presumed bacterial osteomyelitis and we do a biopsy and we can't identify an organism, perhaps it's not that it is culture-negative osteomyelitis, but perhaps it is really CRMO. If you have any questions about CRMO, if you have a patient that you would like us to see, please feel free to call us at the orthopedic program at the number on the screen or go to childrenscolorado.org.